everybody, welcome back to another episode of I Am I. My name persists in being Joshua Ansley, and uh, despite all the different looks I've had, from the long ass hair, to the short hair, to the mohawks, to the beards, to the no beard, to this, to that, to that, it doesn't matter, I am still the same I. I am I. Here we go. So, this week I want to talk about process versus result. Process being, being result oriented versus being process oriented. And it's actually a really, really powerful thing because the misunderstanding that when people talk about being process oriented is the idea that then, that there won't be results, right? Or that there is no awareness of results. That's not the case. The results will definitely come. Re results cannot help but come. It is the law of nature, it is the law of karma. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. There will be a result from any action that is taken both on a mental level and on a physical level. There's karma in thought and in, and in body and in physical. I mean, the thought is physical, but let's, right, I don't want to get, keep it simple, keep it simple. All right, so understanding that when we get process oriented, if, we're, if we stay in being result oriented, then we get stuck in just being the result. It actually causes a lot of frustration and agitation because we're not, we're focusing on the result. It also will not help us allow time and patience. So we won't allow time to pass and recognize the time that it needs in order to make this stuff happen, right? So whatever it is that we're working on, whether it be a transformational understanding of ourselves or working on some sort of project, uh, uh, building our own business, if we're an entrepreneur, if whatever, whatever it is, uh, building a relationship, trust, all this stuff takes time and it is a process. So if we don't recognize that, once we understand that there's certain action that needs to be taken and we take the action and we don't get immediate results, that's how we have to trust the people that have gone before us and done this and that there is a sense that this is going to be a result of this action because it may not be immediately apparent. If you're trying to build trust in a relationship, right? And you're like, well, I, I tried this, I told this and then it didn't work because at one time, so it didn't happen. So then you just throw your hands up in the air and you walk away or you get frustrated and agitated within yourself right? Because you're wanting the result. So again, this does not mean that it's, it's the desire for the result that is going to, or the attachment to the results, not necessarily the desire to the result, because desire can lead you in that, at, into that direction. And that can be a positive thing that you're moving towards, whatever that result is, right? <clears throat> so even that, that's why I say it's not about not being aware of the result, because that's what goal setting is all about. Is like, all right, I'm gonna move in this direction so I'm not just wandering aimlessly in the world, you know? I'm actually setting off in a particular direction towards a particular result, and then I'm going to just allow to let happen whatever needs to happen in that process, right? And it, it, in a creative process, I mean, that is the creative process. It's like, okay, you, you have a vision for it, but if you're so stuck and sold on your vision and you're not allowing the creative process to happen, or not even actually necessarily to get to the result, but if understanding that, the process to get to the result is going to sometimes look so entirely opposite or different than what the result will be, that if you're so resulted, so oriented in the result, then you're not going to allow the process to happen that will actually lead you towards that result. Sometimes it looks like you're going backwards. I talk, you know, I teach in recovery a lot and I talk about uh, as far as transformational work, if you're, if you're taking a ship, a huge massive ship that is sailing in the sea and you're going, suddenly you realize you're going the wrong direction or you have to turn around for whatever reason, right? You can't just go whoop and turn right back around and go. It's, it's a slow, steady turn. And for a long time, it looks like you're not going in anywhere near the direction. Now you're like, wait, we would need to go that way. Why the fuck are we going this way? And you have to go all the way over here and turn until you're finally heading back this way. So it looks like you're going in the complete opposite direction. So you have to recognize that if you get too stuck in the exact result, and this has been my process in, in, in recording this record. First of all, you want to talk about time. I thought I was going to be done in about six months. I've made several records before, so I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, or I guess I was just in a different, wearing different hats and it was a different, it was a different process. It really was a different process, right? So I was so result oriented. I thought that this result was going to be in about six months. <coughs> I think it's, uh, two and a half years. Is that what it is? Coming up on almost three years, almost three years that I've been working on this record. Right? So, and it has gone in so many different directions. I don't even know what the hell was happening. I'm like, where the hell am I ending up? Where the hell am I going? Where am I? Right? And that process has now been unfolding into the most beautiful, incredible thing. And we're nowhere near done, but we're 
picking up steam and things are moving along. I don't know how much longer it's going to take. And that's where I set these certain goals. I may be, goal, I may be wrong in my goals in terms of the time, right? I had no idea how long it was going to take. So I needed to have patience and I needed to have it look crappy as hell at times. I needed to look absolutely or sound, nothing like it was what I really wanted it to sound like. I needed to explore and not be so attached to the outcome that I allow myself to explore these other areas so that it can come out being the best it can possibly be. Because the result is imminent. I, it, it will, <clears throat> it is going to happen. The result is inevitable. It's really what I wanted to say, You're right? It is going to happen invariably. Now, I'm not saying it's exactly going to be the result that you're looking for, but that's why we go towards people who have done what we've done. If you're looking for a spiritual process, you know, in a lot of these programs I work with, they say, if we have what we want, then you'll do what we do, right? And you'll take this process and see like, now this process is going to fuck you up and twist you up, transformational work. If you're working with your emotions and, and learning to transform who you are as a human being, change is a fucking process. It does not happen in a day and it will not happen in a day. Matter of fact, if, you, if, you, if it did happen in a day, it wouldn't be healthy. It really wouldn't be good. All the change and the, the psychological adjustments and, and um, uh, metamorphosis that I've had in the past five years or so, I, I now understand why when I first started the process, somebody said to me, I wish you a slow recovery. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, asshole? Because I was too resulted on the, on, I was too oriented on the results, right? So this is a process thing. And it is, it, honestly, it will change your life. And it's a really difficult thing to be that way, but the, it's the attachment that we're talking about. In the Bhagavad Gita, it's exactly what, you know, Krishna is talking about in these awesome, incredible teachings is that you, your right is to action alone, not to the results of the action, right? That you are not the karma paladata. You are not the, the giver of the fruit of the karma. You are not the giver of the fruit of the action. You take the action. And actually the truth is you don't take the action, right? You just, you don't do anything. That's the deeper Vedantic teaching is that you, the consciousness that is who you really are, doesn't do anything. Your body and your mind take action in the world, right? And then the results come. So you just take action. Your, your right is not to the, the results of the action. You, the results will come. The fruits will come, but you are not creating those fruits. You don't actually know how it's going to happen, right? So just allow it to happen. Allow yourself to be in the process. This beautiful, ugly, messy, snot-faced, fucking shitty, full of life experience of the process and allow it to happen, right? Know yourself. The process of getting to know yourself. That's what it is. It's ugly and messy. Nobody wants to look at this shit. Nobody wants to look at the dark side. Nobody wants to embrace all this stuff. Nobody wants to actually, they just want to be happy. Nobody wants to do the work to get there, right? Nobody wants to embrace what needs to happen. Nobody needs to want to embrace the darkness that they keep fighting against. And that's why part of the reason why they might be so unhappy. So the process needs to happen. The ugliness of the process needs to happen in order for us to transform into this beautiful place. In, in order to get us into that space that is beyond all of our thoughts and our emotions. Right? That can hold space for all of that. That can allow us to then take action to the world in an even a bigger, be more beautiful way. So just allow the action to happen. Just taking the action and relieving yourself from the anxiety that comes from being attached to the outcome of the action. Allow yourself to be in the process. In the Keshulakin, I am you, you are me. Namaste. What? Too much?